of course, the uh, transfer market is still open. And, and yeah, I think this can be a really good year, honestly. Emma, how do you see this? I mean, of course, it's the beginning of the season. There's so much excitement. Everybody wants football to return. Everybody wants to see Barca play again. But listening to the names that uh, were being called off, I mean, you just can't help to get not just excited, but also optimistic ahead of the season. It's contagious, right. isn't it? Being in this stadium as well. I mean, it's really loud. You can hear the, the fans behind us. They're actually the Pumas fans. But in general, the atmosphere is building, and it's really hard not to, you know, go with it. And, of course, when you hear that absolute admiration for uh, Lewandowski coming out, for Kunde, for Pedri, you can really sense the fans' favourites as well. And I just think, you know... It is, gonna, it is an exciting time for Barca, I think, even though, you know, there are lots of things you can talk about that they need to do and improve on. Yeah. But I think it's an, an exciting time football-wise. A, a lot of... And look at that. Dani Alves making his return as well to the Spotify come now and doing it like only Dani Alves knows how to do. With that optimism, that positive vibe, that good energy that characterizes the Brazilian player, and it's of course also a phenomenal opportunity for the Spotify Camp Nou fans to bid farewell to an absolute Barca legend. Yes, I think he deserves to have a farewell like, like the one I think he's going to receive today uh, with all the Camp Nou. Also, lots of Pumas fans yes. that are just in front of us here in the South Good Goal. But, but yeah, I mean, Alves is, is, is a Barca fan. Uh, he's uh, a member of the Barca family. He actually uh, wrote uh, some tweets this afternoon also saying, well, it's not a farewell. It's just, I, I just, I, I'm just here at the camp to say hello to all of you, uh, to be back with you because I'm one else uh, from here, from the family. So it's really exciting to see Daniel Alves here today and he is going to receive, I think, a tribute and he deserves it uh, this afternoon. Well, before this game, we also got to hear from club president Joan Laporta. So why don't we head on over to hear from Joan Laporta and hear what he had to say. What's linked to the players that we present today is that we're very hopeful and we've made a great effort to have a competitive squad. I think that we've achieved it, we've not uh, finished the job yet. But we have great hope with this team. And I hope it can give us great joy. Dani Alves returns. Yes, Dani deserves it. He has a great character. And he's very close to the Barca fans. He's very emotive and he deserves it. I'm sure he'll like it that we have a tribute for him. We learned today about the uh, departure of Neto. What can we expect for the next few days? I hope that there'll be players who will have to leave and we're working on it. And then we'll probably be able to make another signing. But this week we need to focus on registering the players that we've signed. Hoping that everyone can be registered. And if there's uh, another exit, there will uh, there'll have to be one and we hope that we can sign another player. The words there, the words there of club president Joan Laporta talking about how we will see the fans get to uh, a chance to pay homage to the man that we're seeing on the screens right there, Dani Alves, talking about the new signings and perhaps what we can still expect, the transfer market, as you mentioned as well, Bruno, is of course still open. The fans are filling up the seats. We're seeing fans from everywhere, you mentioned as well, Bruno, lots of Pumas fans, which is interesting because they have a similar, the, the, the gold jersey that of course uh, uh, coincides with the second, the away kit of Barca this season, and there's also that beautiful gold color. We're seeing a lot of Polish flags as well in the stands. Emma, we have a few people from Poland just in front of us. Uh, so again, the atmosphere just couldn't be any better. And hopefully, hopefully, the heavens will also do us a favor and keep those raindrops up into the skies for now. Yes, absolutely. Um, just a few words about what President Laporta uh, explained right now. Uh, for me, the big headline is that movements are going to continue. Yeah. Some players that will have to leave, mm -hmm. others that will arrive yet. So. Uh, 
uh, important, and of course, yeah, uh, with importance to register all the players this next week because La Liga is starting on Saturday. And also the recent news that uh, a few minutes ago, uh, Paz also released the, the press note that yeah, uh, Neto is moving to Bournemouth yeah. to the Premier League. So yeah, former now uh, Barca goalkeeper Neto, uh, yeah, won't be anymore at the club, and he will start a new adventure in England in the Premier League. Yeah, man, in that sense, uh, there's still a lot of work, of course, to be done while the yeah. transfer market is still open. Yeah, yeah, there is. And, and it's great to hear that they are very, very... Uh, Laporte is confident that they're going to register the players. There won't be any problems. Uh, he said himself they have to get rid of some players. And unfortunately, it, they have to be very good because they need that that the certain amount of money. So, I mean, realistically, we might be talking about De Jong, who I absolutely love. Maybe Depay, who has been an excellent pre-season unfortunately but you know that's football it's it's uh, it moves so quickly they want to sign more players they're enthusiastic they want to win it's great for the fans you just have to do it in the right way bruno at this point in time why don't we uh, for the listeners there or the viewers rather that are just joining us go over today's starting 11 one more time yes uh, today fc barcelona starting with uh, mark andre ter stegen in goal with a back four with sergi roberto ronald araujo eric garcia and Alejandro Balde. We will still have to wait for the second half to see uh, the possible debut, of course, of new big star Jules Koundé. In midfield, Sergio Busquets, Pedri and Gabi and up front, Rafinha Dembele and Robert Lewandowski. What an ovation he what has received uh, in the presentation a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No surprise there that he got the biggest ovation of the bunch, perhaps. Yes, I think the biggest one. And I've been also yeah, really surprised with Pedri. Yeah. Of course, we know that he's one of the best players in the squad, but uh, well, for his age and, and that he's just arrived here a couple of uh, seasons ago. Well, uh, also, Camp Nou has been really loud once uh, Pedri has stepped into the Camp Nou. And Ansu Fati as well, of course, everybody's so eager for Ansu Fati to uh, be fully recuperated and healthy from uh, the injuries that were plaguing him over the, the course of the past two seasons. Emma, maybe yeah. this could be the season that really everything clicks for the Barca well, number 10. You, you hope so. It's just a case of keeping your fingers crossed because he's been so troubled with injuries and, you know, he came back then, he was injured that same game and he was out for another three months. You have to wrap him in cotton wool a little bit, don't you? You'll always be a little bit careful of, of Ansu Fadi. He's a fantastic player. Um, and, you know, I just think it's frightening the players that Barca have now. That they can play in that front three. And just speaking of Pedri, you see, I'm totally over the fact he's so young. He's just one of the best players in Europe, in the world. And I'm not even considering his age anymore. And that's what happens as well. You kind of forget he's so young and... Well, he's just a great player. Pedri got a big uh, standing ovation, as did Ansu Fati. And this man right here we're seeing on our scre screens, Usman Dembele. Uh, Bruno, who'll be with us for another two seasons. Yes, and has been the best player of Barca's precision. Uh, that's my, my personal view. Uh, it wasn't an easy situation, of course, after all what happened last year. In the end, he signed the contract extension um, at the end of June uh, for two more years. Uh, now he has a contract until 2024. And in this precision, he has showed that now we are, I think, facing a, a new Usman Dembele with a smile in his face, uh, playing football as he knows. And the most important thing, and I think we have to give credit to Xavi Hernandez on that, he's starting to take really good decisions on the field. Because I think everyone knew about his quality. But sometimes he got some problems about taking the decisions in the final pass, when to shoot, and I think that now yeah. he's getting this point. He's very, very individual. He, he's really, really great at, at getting past in a 1v1. Um, and as you said, it started to change towards the end of last season. His decision-making was better. He, wa he might not have been able to take on five or six players, and he realised that in La Liga it's difficult playing against the big teams. So, you know, decisions when to pass, decisions how many touches to take, that's definitely improved. But we're, he's still yet to be tested this year. All his goals pre-season were all individual goals, and I would say poor defending. So it's interesting how he's going to be against a good team with very good defenders. He was also, of course, our uh, top assist provider, Usman Dembele, with 13 assists for the entire season, if I'm not mistaken, Bruno. Uh, but in, just to finish the point here about Usman Dembele, can we expect him as well to sort of adapt uh, a leadership role within the dressing room? We know that on the pitch, he's already uh, taken the form as one of the leaders of this team. What do you think he'll be like off the pitch? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, all the big players uh, also they need to be leaders in, in, in the locker room and, and Dembele has to be one of them. 
we have been talking about, yeah, taking good decisions, he's improving on that, and also scoring goals. This is also a, a key point for any uh, player that uh, yeah, is a forward in Barca, and he has scored four goals in precision when last year he scored uh, one goal in the league and one in the cup, uh, if I'm not wrong, Athletic Club and Linares, so this is this is vital. Good to see also new faces, and smiling in this case, Frank Kessier. Also, I think has been a good surprise in precision. Yes. Kessier, Emma, uh, I don't know your feelings also yeah, about Kessier. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. I was, um, uh, he wasn't even in my radar, to be honest, when I was thinking about him midfield that could come to Barca to help in that defensive role and when it, it, the news did break about Kessia I was like do you know what this is a really good sign and he's a box-to-box -box player he's uh, he, he's very good defensively um, him and Boots, I, I spoke we spoke about this before the game didn't we I would like to see a double pivot, pivot in midfield with Kessia and Busquets playing together because I think that's where our weakest points are and I think teams exploit us there and then when we are enjoying possession, Casilla can go forward and he is that player that can track back. So, yeah, I think he's a really good fit for us. Bruno, Emma, the uh, balls are whizzing past our heads as the player. Say, you're, lucky, you're lucky I'm a goalkeeper. <laughs> I was a goalkeeper. Don't worry, I'll save you. You got a boys. sixth as well. I'll Unfortunately <laughs> for us, we're going to have to uh, bid you farewell because you're going to go up right now to join Robert over in the booth to call today's game. So, Emma, have a fantastic time. Enjoy the game. Thank and uh, you. we'll be talking and connecting with you a little bit later. At this point, uh, Bruno, you and I, we're going to continue. I'm going to turn just slightly to make sure that uh, we're not going to end up on any videos going viral uh, as we get maybe potentially smashed in the ball the back of our heads as uh, the players are training and warming up ahead of this game. Like I said, 12 minutes before kickoff, we're seeing Robert Lewandowski on our screens, Gavi as well. Perhaps that right there symbolizes exactly what this Barca team is about, the youth with that experience. Yes, and uh, actually Lewandowski explained it also in his uh, presentation that apart from all what he can uh, help Barca in the field, scoring goals uh, yeah, and playing good football, he wants also to be useful in this kind of connection with the young lads uh, because he has played for many different clubs, he has played Champions League finals, he has been yeah, uh, in the top flight for many, many years and he wants to help uh, all the youngsters, and, and not the youngsters, uh, to use his experience, not just in the field, also the one outside the field, to uh, have, of course, a good atmosphere in the locker room and be uh, also an important part of the of the squad in this sense. So I think it's important, uh, Lewandowski also taking into account this uh, mental aspect. Could be an important season for Gerard Piquet as well, uh, who we're just seeing on our screens. Gerard Piquet now has got, of course, uh, a lot of good competition as Robert Lewandowski just scored his very first goal here in the Cup. Now, it is just a warm-up uh, session but you can hear from the crowd already just how eager they are to see the Polish super striker get his first goal but yeah just uh, on Gerard Piquet I mean he of course will also continue to be such a fundamental part in Xavi's system as well as that leadership figure that we were talking about. Yes and uh, not just Piquet I mean all new signings Christensen, Kunde, Araujo no one is gonna uh have uh, an easy way to be in the starting lineup because there are lots of good defenders. Uh, same for Eric Garcia. So, but that's great for a manager in this case for Xavi because just the best ones are going to be the ones uh, in the starting lineup. But now uh, I think Barca has improved a lot uh, in the defensive line with uh, the signings of Christensen. Uh, we are talking, of course, about the Champions League winner uh, for Chelsea, Christensen, and of course Jules Koundé, uh, one of the best centre backs in the last years in La Liga. It was a good signing from Monty to Sevilla when he was playing for and then Spurdeus. He got a bit of difficulties in his first three, four, five months in Sevilla that wasn't playing a lot in his adaptation. But of course now, uh, well, he's a, a different player, a key player, and has yeah, um, grown a lot in, in these last campaigns in La Liga. And such hot, uh, hot property as well. Uh, many big clubs wanted to acquire the services of Jules Koundé, as well as the likes of Rafinha and Robert Lewandowski. Uh, in that sense, it's great to see that Barca still has that lure, has that pull, that attractiveness uh, for players to come on over to play for Football Club Barcelona, even if the offers that they have of other teams uh, are superior. This is something that when you uh, travel with the squad and you go to Australia, you go now to the States, you understand why Barca is more than a club and why the players want to, to sign here. Because the impact that a player has playing and defending this shirt is not the same one like uh, for another side. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely great to see that Barca probably in one of the last uh, worst years, last one uh, in terms of yeah uh, football and everything, also economics, not a good and an easy year for the institution. But uh, even though you see how players want to sign Barca, this yeah. of course shows that the club is alive and that yeah, we are talking about yeah, more than a club.
Correct, Bruno. And seeing as you uh, joined the team, you traveled with the team over in the U.S. Tour, who would you pick as perhaps the surprise, your most surprise, uh, surprising signing so far? Who do you think uh, sort of exceeded your expectations? Let's put it that way. I will say Rafinha, probably Rafinha, because uh, it was it's a player that uh, I didn't have the, the chance to see many many Leeds games last campaign, so I wasn't expecting too many things from him. And uh, in this preseason, we've seen which kind of player we are talking about. Uh, he combines really well. He also scores goals. He has a lot of talent and, and, and great skills. So, uh, yeah, so Rafinha has been a great surprise because basically it was a player that I had the, the, the luck to see a lot. And now that I start seeing him training sessions, games and everything, he's surprising me uh, quite well, yeah. What about Frank Kessier, the uh, Ivorian midfielder? Sort of uh, flew under many of uh, us Barca fans' radar when he first arrived. Um, however, his importance within the Milan dressing room certainly cannot be understated when you have a nickname like El Presidente. Yes, uh, this is basically because he parked in the, <laughs> yeah. in the place in the parking from the president in, in Milan on his first day and they told him, uh, Frank, you have to take your car out from here. And he said, no, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have a training session. And this is why he yeah, was this nickname El Presidente. But, uh, que si but you can see it, it sort of spills over on the field as well. He has a very commanding yes, figure. has a lot of personality. Yeah. Uh, he was a key player uh, for AC Milan that won the Scudetto after many, many years. So uh, he's coming from a winning squad and it's great that he also can use his experience to, to help Barca. And in the end, as we have been uh, discussing and talking with Emma, he's a different profile. And in a team, you always need different profiles. Uh, it's not going to work just with uh, really talented midfielders. You also need this extra point uh, of, of a physical player. Nowadays, football is uh, becoming more physical. And you need this extra point of, of, of shape. And we've seen it not just in Kessie, in, in all Barca players, if you see Pedri, Ansu Fati, Ferran Torres, uh, now in the preseason, they are growing a lot also in this uh, aspect and it's going to be really important. Barca and all the uh, trainers have been focusing a lot on uh, yeah, the physical workout in this position and it's going to be important even more this year that it's going to be really busy with the World Cup in the middle of, of the competition. That's right, Bruno. It's gonna, going to be an atypical season in that sense as uh, the balls behind us continue to whiz past our ears and heads, but uh, we're going to keep our composure and just cross our fingers. Hopefully none of them will hit the back of our heads. We are slowly but surely inching our way forward to kick off about five, six minutes left before the ball will start to roll here at the Spotify come now. Take a look at your screens because Dani Alves is giving what used to be his teammates a big hug and what we can expect will be a standing ovation and a beautiful homage to if not the best, one of the best wing backs and uh, right backs in Barca's history. Yes, now President Laporta is going to give him now um, uh, a special detail. 23 titles for Barca, Dani yes. Alves, uh, what a career. The player of all football history that has won more titles. Uh, and now it's going to be really special to see him receiving this uh, yeah, uh, detail from President Juan Laporta with all, all supporters. And yeah, these images are uh, absolutely amazing. So now receiving this uh, tribute and he deserves it. His presence and, and his arrival back to Barca is something that we cannot understate neither, is it? I mean, of course, during his... Uh, the the golden years, let's say, when he was playing under Pep Guardiola during those times, he was one of the best players out there on the field. But in his uh, second return for Barca under the management of Xavi Hernández, it was perhaps more his, uh, uh, let's say, his figure, his personality in that dressing room that was so key to uh, turn this team around and, and help the team go from ninth position all the way up to second place. Absolutely. I was going to say, of course, his personality, but also he played really, yes. really good games no, and he course. scored important goals uh, at the Camp Nou. Yeah, I remember the one against Athletic Club uh, that was amazing. And, and yeah, he was an important player in these last six months. Of course, now he's starting a new era, playing for Pumas with a clear objective to arrive in form to the World Cup and play lots of minutes. Uh, and now here you see this set for uh, 131 appearances of Dani Alves for FC Barcelona with captain Sergio Busquets and President Laporta. Fantastic images. A beautiful image, a beautiful moment, and historic as well as one of the Barca legends bids farewell 
to his home, and it will always be his home, of course. There's a special relationship between Alves and, and Barca. You can see just in his face, he smiles, he, he's something different. It's difficult, difficult, I think dif difficult to, under to understand or to explain sometimes, because, of course, he, has, he, he hasn't gone in La Masia, he signed from Sevilla, but yes. the relationship between Alves and, and Barca seems like he has been uh, here like since all life, and hopefully, uh, yeah, once he's retired, of course, uh, he's gonna help the club. He needs to be here more, and and and, and hopefully he's he's gonna be also, um, yeah, uh, part of Barca for many more years. This player that uh, really integrated, got so integrated with the local culture, the fans as well, so beloved, and it's wonderful to see a moment like this where he gets a chance to say goodbye and play one last time on this beautiful grass field here at the Spotify Come No. Bruno, we are three minutes away from kickoff, so why don't we get go, um, go over the starting 11s one more time? Yes, uh, last uh, review of the starting lineups today for FC Barcelona. Uh, Mark andre Ter Stegen in goal, a back four with Sergi Roberto, Ronald Araujo, Eric Garcia, and Alejandro Valde in midfield, Sergio Busquets, Gabi, and Pedri, and up front, Usman Dembele, Rafinha, and Lewandowski. For Pumas, today, Julio González, Benevendo, Meritao, Dieno, Toto Salvio, Aldrete, López del Prete, Freire Ortiz, and Dani Alves. All right, well, that is it from us. For you viewers on YouTube, make sure that you click that link under the bottom to sign up to Barca TV+. Plus. We leave you now at the hands of Robert von Eckhout and Emma Byrne, and we will see you at halftime and in the post-match. Enjoy this game. Just under a week to go until we get the new season underway officially. Barca present themselves tonight in front of the fans at the Spotify Camp Nou. It's the Drunk Gamper Trophy live here on Barca TV+. Plus. The opponent is Pumas from Mexico, and Xavi's men will raise the curtain at home for what we hope will be a season of success. New faces, new kit, new naming for the stadium, and most important of all, new hope. Last season was underwhelming. No titles and a team that went through a whirlwind of struggles, both in terms of play and injuries. But there were also some promising signs. And that is what Xavi Hernandez and his staff will be aiming to build on. Xavi demanded more depth in order to be more competitive. And his wish was granted. Barca didn't score enough goals and conceded way too many last season. Those issues have been addressed with the new arrivals. It's been a very busy summer in the Barca offices and the job isn't yet completed. But one thing is certain, President John Laporta, his team on the board, Mateo Alemán, Jordi Cruyff, Xavi Hernández and the whole staff have given Barca fans a reason to dream. Five quality signings, a young and exciting core of players, all led by veteran and experienced club legends. All the perfect ingredients for what we hope will be a tasty recipe. We'll get a first taste of it tonight here at the Spotify Camp Nou. It's Barca against Pumas. And joining me here today for the Cape commentary is Emma Byrne. Emma, how are you? I'm very good, Robert. How are you? Very happy to be back in Camp Nou. Very happy. It is great to be here with the fans. The Gamper Trophy had not uh, taken place here since 2019 with fans. It was obviously the 2020 edition uh, with, uh, with no fans in the stadium due to COVID restrictions. It has traditionally been the first chance for the fans to see the new team at uh, home. Today, Barca will, uh, or the fans will be excited to greet the likes of Christensen, Cassier, Rafinha, Lewandowski, Koundé, maybe to celebrate even a first Lewandowski goal in a Barca shirt. Yeah! 
let's, uh, I mean, this place will absolutely erupt if that happens. If Lewandowski scores tonight, I just, it's just going to be incredible, absolutely incredible. But, you know, I'm really excited. You named him there, Rafina. I'm really excited to see him play in person here. Very, very good player, extremely quick. I love the way he takes his chances early. He's very quick to move the ball as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing him tonight. Rafinha and Lewandowski, the two signings both featured in the uh, lineup, which includes Marc Andre to Stegen in goal, Sergio Roberto, Araujo, Eric Garcia, and Balde at the back. A midfield which I get the sense we'll see a lot of this season with Sergio Busquets, Gavi, and Pedri. And up front, it's Usman Dembele, Robert Lewandowski, and uh, Rafinha. We did learn just minutes ago that Christensen is out for tonight's game. Uh, we've seen him paired with Eric Garcia in all of the preseason tour games in the, the US, but we will not be able to see him here tonight at uh, the Spotify camp. No, we will also not be able to see Ferran Torres, who was not included in the list of players available. Yeah, I mean, two amazing players to bring in, and it just shows the strength and depth in the squad that Chevy Hernandez has. We see, as you said, Christensen and, and Garcia together played excellently against Real Madrid, really kept them at bay. And, you know, it's a shame that we don't get to see them tonight, but with a player like Araujo that can come in and play centre-back, which we prefer him there, don't we, instead of right back, just to be able to slot in there. And, and actually, I'm interested to see how Sergio Roberto and Alex Balde do, because they're pushing them, aren't they? They're pushing them to play. It's, they, you know, her Xavi feels like he needs replacements in the both fullback position. So he's testing them out tonight, and, you know, these youngsters need to prove themselves. It is the right moment, of course, to test the players. We heard from uh, our assistant coach, Oscar Hernandez, saying that they'll try and give as many minutes possible to as many players as possible as well to see what they're looking like going into next week with the league opener against Rayo Vallecano. Joining us for commentary tonight here, pitch side, is Bruno Balleste. Bruno, we just saw a minute ago that the Camp Nou offered a warm tribute to Danny Alves returning here to what has been twice his home. We didn't have uh, Bruno ready there right now. We'll go back to him in a second. Uh, this scamper, as we said, sees the return of Danny Alves in a Puma shirt. We just saw the warm welcome that uh, the fans gave him and his former teammates. Uh, all honours for Danny Alves. This preseason has had five games to help the team ramp up for the new season. Some impressive wins, a quote-unquote friendly classico. And now the final touch before kicking off La Liga next Saturday here at Camp Nou against uh, Rayo Vallecano. Emma, what has impressed you the most of this uh, preseason so far? Well, I, I definitely think the new signings have come in and really put their stamp on things. You know, they've slotted in very well. Lewandowski is an extremely, extremely experienced player. And you can just see when he plays that everything sticks to him. He's a very, very difficult player to get the ball off. And he just links and brings in play, uh, you know, the likes of Pedri, the likes of Dembele. The players that are playing off him have the confidence in him that he's going to keep the ball. So it allows that movement up front really nicely. But in general, I just think, actually, the Real Madrid game was one of my favourites just because that feisty nature. I, I, I love that, you know, El Clasico feel and, as you, you called it, a friendly. There's no way that's ever going to be a friendly. So, you know, that, that intent from the team that they're here and they're going to be aggressive and, you know, something that I always like to see in, in a team, especially like Barca, who are known for being, you know, maybe a little bit of a pushover, but not anymore, especially not with Ronaldo Araujo in the squad. Well, we've seen the players who will not start in the lineup take their places on the bench. We're minutes away from kickoff here at Camp Nou. Things running just a little bit late. I do have to say, Emma, I'm loving the soundtrack of Camp Nou after four years of not being here. And uh, yes, a good opportunity, a last test for the uh, Barca players. A list of 27 available for tonight's uh, game with Ferran Torres and Christensen missing uh, the game. Ferran in the final stages of his uh, recovery. Fitness and availability was an issue last season. Yeah, it was. And we were speaking about it before the game. I'm sure Xavi was asking more of his players than that, than that they could afford. Can they play, even with a little niggle of an injury, putting the players on the pitch because he literally had no other options. It's different this season. They've got the strength and depth in the squad. They they can afford to, to sit someone on the bench, someone like Alba on the bench, where they couldn't last season, trying to keep him on the pitch. And, you know, and they had to literally lift him off the pitch at the end. 
So yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant for Xavi. It's not so great for the players because they all there's there's a lot of positions up for grabs. It's very it's going to be very competitive. So you know it's not going to be an easy season for them, but it's good because you want that. You want to breathe that competitiveness in training, which ra raises the levels all round. In attendance today here at uh, Camp Nou, we saw Rafa Marquez, Javier Saviola, Deco, and Silvino, some of the uh, important players of. Uh, Football Club Barcelona throughout the first decade of the 2000s. Now I think we can go to Bruno Balleste. Bruno, uh, a warm welcome that uh, Camp Nou gave to another of the icons of this uh, first decade and second decade of the 2000s, Danny Alves. Absolutely. Hello and good evening. Uh, it's a big day. It's the Joan Gamper Trophy. This is where everything uh, starts. And hopefully this is going to be a fantastic season, the 22-23. And we're going to stay, all of us here, on June, because this year the Champions League final is 10th June, a bit late, uh, celebrating trophies. We hope, of course, to yeah, enjoy a fantastic season. A great atmosphere at the Camp Nou now, while we see the players, of course, stepping into the field. The Barca anthem goes off. The players step onto the pitch for the curtain raiser for this 2022-2023 season, which we'll hope will be a long one. We'll go right to the end with that uh, Champions League final that Bruno was mentioning.